my goal with my team here at Spectral Motion is to build it up as much as we can and to show the world that, that makeup and prosthetics and, and practical creature effects are great. That they're not just something you, you put, put there in case it's not going to work. It's what you put in front of your camera because you know it's going to work. My name is Mike Elizalde, and I'm the president and art director at Spectral Motion, uh, Inc. Uh, I'm also a prosthetic makeup artist, and uh, I've been in the industry about 25 years now. When, when I was a kid and I first saw the, the Universal Monsters, that to me really, really sparked uh, a creative note in me that, that, you know, previously wasn't there. And I'm talking six years old, you know, first time you see uh, uh, Frankenstein's monster, uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon, all of those characters to me were really special as a kid. Uh, so that's that's really where, where I can trace it back to. My mom thought it was great. You know, she thought, oh good, he's, he's keeping himself busy. He's doing something that, you know, isn't, isn't getting in my way. <laughs> so uh, the interest in magic was something that came along later when I was in my, in my early teens, pre-teens actually. I started really uh, watching and admiring people like, you know, David Copperfield and Doug Henning on TV. And, and during my high school years, I was fortunate enough to stumble upon a, a, a magic, uh, an illusion factory called Owen Magic Supreme. So I spent a lot of time in that place um, and learning learning parts of the craft that I had no idea were going to be uh, germane to, to the field of makeup. So I did get a lot of education uh, that would help me in, in the makeup industry later uh, in, that little, in that little magic shop in Alhambra when I was younger. I joined the Navy right after high school and that was a, a really great uh, way for me to, to start making a living on my own, uh, get out of a bad home situation. That, that, wasn't, that wasn't a fun place to be. So the Navy offered me a very good escape. You know, it was a great place for me to, to go and, and, and develop as a person. Uh, and it served me very well. You know, I, I was able to make a living. I was able to travel quite a bit. It, it also gave me some insights into the the technical aspects of, of what our industry uh, entails. Not so much in makeup, but definitely in the animatronics world. Uh, electronics, uh, what what specific electronic components do, how, how they work, um, how they can affect the overall, you know, uh, movement of something. So that was all very important uh, background information for me to, to pursue the, the uh, animatronic aspect of our, of our field. The second part of my enlistment, the last four years, is when I started really realizing that that, that yearning for, for being a makeup artist, a prosthetic, a monster guy, really, a prosthetic creature uh, effects guy, was still there. And it, it was becoming much more uh, m much more of a calling than it had uh, up until that point. And that's when uh, I, I began learning on my own and exploring the processes of makeup through books and, um, and learning as much as I could on my own. And after my second enlistment was up, I was able to come to back to L.A., back to Hollywood here, and uh, submit some of my work to the uh, studios in town. I mean, it was, it was kind of like uh, divine providence. You know, the education had come to me uh, by by almost miraculous means, you know, uh, coincidental means. When I first got out of the Navy, I took a job as a an air conditioning installation guy, right? Because that was going to pay the bills. So I started working in that field. Um, about a month after I started, one of the jobs that I had, oddly enough, was right right near Stan Winston's studio. I I saw the shop, you know. There were, there were molds, you know, sort of scattered outside of the door. There were people inside doing the stuff that I had seen in books, <laughs> you know. So I, I ran over there. I dropped everything. I ran over there, and I, and I stuck my head in the door. And I always carried pictures of, of my early work, you know, with me uh, so I could try to get a job in the business. Um, and uh, and I, I stuck my head in there, and I said, hey, you know, my name's Mike, and I'm really interested in the stuff you guys are doing. Is it okay if I show you guys a couple of pictures, you know, not knowing the protocol whatsoever, you know? I thought they were just going to say, oh, yeah, come on in. We got a job for you, you know? But um, uh, so one of the guys grabbed the pictures, took them some, to another room, came back, handed them back to me, and said, you need more practice. <laughs> so that was my first, you know, sort of foray into, into trying to get a job in the industry. 
And then shortly after that, about another month and a half after that, that's when I got the job at, at uh, Beagler's. Uh, they, they were looking for just extra sets of hands to do, you know, painting of background characters and casting of, of slip latex masks. And so that's how, uh, how I was ushered in. Oddly enough, I didn't know it at the time, but I was also meeting the people that, that I would later select to come and work here, you know, which uh, my, my, uh, my intent has always been to build spectral motion around the reputation of, you know, quality, reliability, and, uh, and realism, ultra realism. So I've always sort of kept those people in my, locked up in my, in my little storage area in my brain to refer to later and say, these are the, the guys and girls that I want to I wanna attract to work here at, at, at my company. And it's worked out really well for us. I'd done a couple of shows at Steve Johnson's shop. And one of the, one of the shows that, that, was, uh, that came through there was Blade Two. And uh, my job on that show was I was the lead animatronic designer for the Reaper puppets. And I worked uh, with Guillermo del Toro on the set, uh, puppeteering uh, the characters. So we formed a very close friendship, and as a result of that, he offered me the opportunity to do Hellboy, uh, to help with the movie Hellboy. Um, it was a kind of a, a co-op between our company and Rick Baker's company. Rick's company did the red guy, and we did all the other characters. Um, so that was an opportunity for me to start making some phone calls and, and asking Mark Satrakian and Steve Wang and, and you know, Norman Cabrera and a lot of amazingly talented people to see if they would want to come and help. And to my utter astonishment, they all said yes. So uh, that's sort of how the evolution of, you know, spectral motion came about, how it, how it, uh, those seeds were planted very early in my career and how it developed into a full uh, fledged studio that, that we're sitting in today. We've seen so much of our, of our uh, work leave the United States and and head off to other places because it's cheaper it's you know uh, lots of lots of incentives are being offered to filmmakers to shoot anywhere other than here um, but my hope is that that will turn around I'm always I'm always the optimist I'm always the guy who's gonna say things are gonna turn around things are gonna shift and you know what that's always served me really well too because even if they don't you're still in a good space you know you've still kind of kept the faith and then and then that faith carries you into the next phase of what you need to do to make sure things stay uh looking good um so um i do believe that that it's important to learn how to diversify spectral motion has always also prided itself on the fact that we we are by definition a multi-level design studio you know if we broke it down into percentages uh, between um, prosthetic makeup effects and and other other makeup related effects and animatronics, I would say we're probably in the 50/50 realm. I realized that, and this is really a strange thing to 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 understand that my abilities and my my talents were not only in you know getting my hands into clay and and creating something that I could put on somebody's face. It was also in in designing and creating mechanical systems that that I could puppeteer myself and 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 with my friends create a, a whole character that that we could bring to life that way. So, from from my point of view, I think it's good to have a broad knowledge of the industry at large. But I also think that um, you know a lot of people tend to specialize in one thing, and my advice is you know what try all of it try try as much of it as possible because you'll find I think in a lot of cases, that your talents lie in a lot of different places. I'm passionate about the creative process. That's what, that's what keeps me going. That's, that's the furnace, the, the fire in my furnace is, you know, creativity. Um, seeing it, experiencing it, and, and actually getting my hands in it myself. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's like nothing else. You know, when you're engaged in a creative uh, process, time goes by hours go by and you don't even feel that time elapsing you know you just you get this tremendous gratification from standing back from your sculpture or your your animatronic device or whatever it is and just looking at it for a moment and thinking that that came from my hands you know or that came from the hands of one of the amazing artists that I've been able to attract here 
or whatever whatever the 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 method is the outcome is is total gratification you know it's it's a, a very satisfying thing to me to to see the efforts the collective efforts of the team um, in front of a camera and and to see the reactions of the director and the production team that's like that that magic trick you know it's like when you show somebody a great magic trick their reaction is like how did they do that you know so to me it's the same the same feeling when you when you present something to a, a director and his team and ultimately when you see the reaction of an audience in a movie theater it's that same feeling of we created that and look at that reaction that's that's amazing that's what keeps us you know driven and and, and sparked up about what we're doing fired up <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.